In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to create this very thumbnail. It's been one of the most asked questions on this very channel. All right, guys, let's get started. And today's video is sponsored by my homies on Patreon. And thanks so much, guys, for supporting this dream. If you want to be part of my Patreon, you can check on the link down below. So we have Photoshop already open. We're going to create using Photoshop. Just click on new file. And I'm going to use this custom one. This is what I've been using so far. But I've seen some guys using 1280 by 720 but I'm gonna use this and then I'm gonna create and I'll be providing you guys with the files and also the PSD file that you can open directly in Photoshop so first of all we're gonna bring in one background just click on this very plus icon to add one layer to it then click on the rectangle and click on fill we're gonna change it just click on this so we can bring the colors out we're gonna choose one color from this side. I'm gonna choose blue color, but if you can click on this side and it's gonna bring this color picker out, you can just select from here. Then click on OK. Let's close this. Then I'm just gonna draw a rectangle to cover the whole canvas. Double click on it to change the name. I like to change the name so it will make it easy when I come back to it later on in the future. So with that, just double click on this very side. Let me drag this to this side. Then we're gonna use a gradient overlay. Just click on that. Then click on this side to bring all these parameters out. Then click on this color, we're gonna work on it. Mine is already set there, but I'm gonna show you guys. Let's just move this to this side. So now click on this side and then click on this color to change the color you wanna go with. So with this, I want the bright side to be somewhere towards blue. So I'm just gonna go to this very side, then click on okay then click on this side or double click to bring the color picker out and then i want that side to go on the dark side i'm going to show you guys very soon then click on ok then let me just move all this to this side so you can see exactly what i'm doing so you can see it's going to give this smooth gradient in the middle side so this bright side going to be on this side and this dark side going to be on this side now when i move this away from it look at it carefully you can see i'm spreading it but i want it to be almost at the middle so i just move it a little bit closer to the bright side then click on ok and make sure the style is on radial that's what's giving us this look if you click on linear it's going to give you from up to down so i'm just going to leave it on radial and click on ok now the next thing is to bring in the lines with that, go back to the rectangle tool, click on that. And this time around, click on the full, let's change the color to white. You can click on this color picker so you can select the white from here and click on OK and close it. Now let's make a new layer for that very one. Let's change the name, double click on that and change the name to line. Now I'm gonna draw the white line. It went back to blue, let's change that to white. Now I'm just going to draw a straight line, very thin straight line with a rectangle tool. Just click, let's make it as small as possible to this very side and it's going to give us that white line. Now with that done, go to this side, press option, click and drag upwards to make a duplicate of that. Now with that selected, click on the transform tool. Then click on this side to bring the X and Y axis out. Then we're going to use the Y and drag it down a little bit. So I just want to maintain this very space in between it. So you can just go with your eyes or you can be using the ruler on this side. I like to go with my eyes. Now select this one, press command and select this one. And then press option and drag upwards to make a duplicate of that. Then click on this very side to bring the X and Y out and then I'm going to drag the Y downwards this way. Now I'm going to repeat this process making a duplicate of all of them till I fill the whole screen and I'll be fast on this very side. So now we are done with the lines. What you do is let's make a group of all the lines by selecting all, press command and select all. If you know a shortcut keys for this, drop a comment down below. I will appreciate that. Then with all the lines selected, just drag to this very folder side and it's going to group them. I think we left this ones out, so let's just select those ones and drop it in that very group. Now let's just change the name of the group, double click that and change it to lines. With the lines selected, go to opacity and let's change it to somewhere 2 to 5%. So with this, I'm going to go for 
3%. The next thing is to bring the green arrow that's going to show on the lower test on the screen. So with that, we're going to use the pen tool. Just click on that and make sure this side is on path. Then we're just going to draw an arrow showing it's going down and up on this very side. So I'm going to start from here, make a point and make one point coming down, one point going up. Now go to this very side and click on this selection to make a selection of it. Then let's just press OK and it's going to give you this dotted selection. Now click on the brush tool. Let's increase the size of it. Then make sure the hardness is on zero. We want a very hard edges. Let's close that. And now you can just select any color you want. I'm going to use red. It doesn't really matter with this side. We're going to change that later on. Then I can just brush on this very side. Now press Command D to deselect the selection. Then on this very side, on fill, let's take it to zero. So we'll take the red out. We're going to work on that. Then double click on this very layer. On that side, click on the color overlay to bring the color out. Then click on this side and then we can change the color from here to green. So I'm just going to leave it on this very green. Take it to the green side and click on OK. Now on opacity, I'm going to take it down to somewhere 30 to 40%. Then I'm going to add some stroke to it. Click on that. If you want to change the settings of it, just click on this side and then you can increase or decrease the stroke of it. So with this, I'm just going to take it to somewhere 10. Then with the rest, I'm just going to leave it just like it is. Then click on inner glow. Let's click on that. If you want to change the settings, you can just change the size of it. You can see what it's doing on this very side. So with the size, I can go a little bit down to this side. We're going to add some outer glow to it too. Just click on that and then you can click on this side and change the settings too. So with the size, if you want it to really go down, you can just do it on this very side. Now I'm happy with what it is, so I'm just going to click on OK. Then let's just close this side. With the layer, let's change the name of it. Just double click on that and just write green arrow. Now we're going to bring in an image we're going to use. I'm going to use this of Iman Ghazi. I've already done the cutout already. So I'm just going to drag and drop in the timeline. And I'll be providing you guys with this very file too. Now with that, we're just going to drag it on top of the lines. So it will be above all of them. Now with that layer selected, let's just change the name of it to Iman. Go to the transform tool or you can use the command T for that. Let's just bring him down this side, increase the size of it and bring it down to this very side. Then press enter to leave it on. I'm happy with how it looks like now, but you can see his hand is showing on this side. So I'm just going to clean that up and I'll be using the eraser tool. But first, let's just convert this very file. Right click on that and I'm just going to select rasterize layer or whatever they call it. Then I'm going to select the eraser tool. Now I'm going to leave it on block. So just choose block and then I can clean this side off. The next thing we're going to bring in some test at the top. And with that, we're going to start with the rectangle background. Click on the rectangle and this time around, click on fill. We're going to change that to gradient. So just click on this gradient and right from there, you can change the color on this side. So with here, if you want the bright side to be this, you can click on that, double click on that, and then it's going to bring the color picker out. So then you can go for the color you want to use. I like using red. It really pops out nicely. Then click on OK. And then the dark side, you can double click on this and choose the dark side. So you can take it more to the dark side of that color. Then click on OK. And now we can click on this side and draw our rectangle shape at the top. And we want this rectangle to be behind Iman. So we're just going to drag it one more layer down and you can see. But when you look at it, we want the dark side to be towards his head. So this is what we do. Just click on the fill. Let's change the placement of this. So double click on this and take it to the dark side. Click OK, then click on this side and let's take that one to the bright side and click on OK. Now click on this side to take it off. Then we can click on the text tool, click on the screen. Let's change the text that it comes with. 
and then you can write anything you want to write then i have to change the color to white select all and change the color to white then we can select all and change the size too so i'm going to make it a little bit bigger then click on the transform tool and drag it to the top side and we want this to be right in the middle of this very red background so with that this is what you do click on the time for truth or the test that you wrote press command and select the rectangle tool and with the transform tool selected it's going to bring these very controls out for you so now just click on this it's going to take to the center and this is going to align the vertical side too so it will be right in the middle of that now we're going to bring in our cup cut or whatever logo you're going to use so i was using cup cut i'll go to the folder just drag and drop in the timeline let's just reduce the size of it drag it to this very side and press enter now make a duplicate of that by pressing option and dragging upwards now click on the down one that's the one we're going to work on let's increase this so we can see exactly what we're doing let's just click on the screen and drag it down to this very side so depending on how you want the 3d look to look like with my i want it to look like it's coming towards down but if you want it to go up you can easily do that so i'm just going to make it come a little bit down to this very side now we're going to work on that just double click on this then click on color overlay then click on this side and let's change the color of that now let's just take the color to somewhere close to white and then let's just drag it down so we can darken it a little bit so something like this to give that 3d look then click on ok and opacity let's take it back to somewhere 100 i think we can still work on that so just click on that and take it towards the bright side a little bit then click on ok and click on ok on this side too now let's just group this one press command and select both then drag it to this very group folder and then we can change the name double click that and write cup cut now the next thing we're going to bring in an arrow that's going to point towards iman gazi so people will know exactly what we are talking about so with that i'm going to go to the folder that i have it i'm going to bring it right down here you can get all this in the files click on enter and then let's just increase the size of it a bit more and with this one it comes already with the shadow so you don't need to add any shadow now let's go back to the text i forgot one thing about it double click that and add drop shadow to that very text then click on ok so the text can pop behind this very background and sometimes with the images i add some drop shadow and also a little bit of inner glow to it just double click that then click on drop shadow and you can see it adds a little bit to that very look then i add some inner glow to it click on that let's change the color to white and click on ok and then when you increase the opacity you can see what it's doing to the hair and also the edges of him i just take it down a little bit to this very side and then click on ok sometimes too i want something brighten at the background of him so with that let's just close this and make a new layer by pressing this very plus icon then i'm going to put that layer behind iman gazi then i'm just going to select the brush tool click on this color and let's just select a color close to this very blue so i'm just going to select this using the color picker and go towards the bright side a little bit then click on ok then click on this very side let's soften the edges a little bit and then with the size i can go a little bit down 500 let's close that something like this and then i'm just gonna click on that and you can see it brightens behind him a little bit command z to do that i just add a little bit to it so this is what we have so far and one big secret that's been helping me a lot i'm gonna show you guys the image that you're using just click on that and click on filter then select color raw filter so now here i'm going to add a little bit look to it with that i'm going to start with the lights give it a little bit of exposure contrast it a little bit more then go to color add vibrance to it a little bit to make him pop saturation add a little bit then go to detail 
and add a lot of sharpness to it. And that's one trick that's been helping me with thumbnails. Just increase it a lot. When you upload to YouTube, it's gonna take it down a bit. So just increase that, then click on OK. Now, if you're happy with the whole result that you wanna post, just select all of them and let's just group them. Then we can change the name to somewhere Iman. Then press option and drag upwards to make a duplicate. Click on this very eye icon to deselect this very one. Then with the top one selected, right click on that and convert to smart object. And one last thing, we're gonna add sharpness to the overall thumbnail. And I got this trick from one of those guys on YouTube. Then go to filter, camera raw filter. And then with this, we're just gonna go straight to detail and add sharpness to the overall look and click on OK. And then when you're happy with it, you can just go to File, Export, Save for Web. Then you can select JPEG and click on Save and save it at wherever you wanna save it. So as you can see, very simple and easy to create this kind of thumbnails. Now if you wanna know how to edit like the pro YouTubers, check on this playlist. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.